down thoughts. Try to exalt yourself against the word of God. Cast them down. But here's what I want to tell you. Any thought that comes through your mind, you take it and judge it. Say, there's my thought. I just had that thought. I'm going to look at it. Now, has that thought got hope in it? Or does that thought have fear? So the doctor's report, the doctor says, you're going to die. Does that, is that a good report? So that may be a fact, but it's not the truth. Because the truth of God's word is Jesus healed everyone. So you take those thoughts and when they come, and don't give them place. Don't allow them to come through your mind and stay. Don't allow them to build a nest. Because Jesus came for us today to have life today. He did not come for us to have to fight through this life. He came to life and life more abundantly today. Not tomorrow. And not just the people in, the, in America. He came to give life and that more abundantly to you. To everyone that can hear my voice. And then more. And then more. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who has known the mind of Christ? Who's intimately known him? But then at the end of that verse it says But we have the mind of Christ. So what is our stance supposed to be when we have a problem? What is our stand? Our stand is I trust God. I started doing something I would encourage everybody to do. I started making a victory journal. I started making a victory journal. Every time God does something good for me, I write it down. And then when I have a problem, I go to that journal. And I start reading out loud. God, thank you. Look what you did here. God, thank you. Look what you did here. God, look what you did here. And look what you did here. And the time I get through, I am so full of joy. And then the, the devil is gone. The devil is gone. It's not, it's not the taking authority over the devil that made him believe. It's, it's the fact he doesn't like the praises of God. And when we start lifting him up, the enemy leaves. leaves. You know, we praise God here on this mountain. And the word of God says that if I be lifted up, Jesus, he will draw all men. He, he will draw all men. So we need to stop talking our problems. Stop telling our problems on the telephone. But call your sister up and say, hey, guess what God did for me today? Guess what God did for me? Guess what God healed me of? And if God, if God has done nothing for you, call your friend and say, hey, guess what? I've got a phone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for what you have. Okay. Come on, yeah, on a Thank God for your breath. Thank God for your life. When I started realizing that scripture in Ephesians, 
God told me that I was doing something that we're supposed to be doing, all of us. We're supposed to be living from eternity. Living from eternity. Not living thanking God for eternity. Not living, waiting for eternity. But living right now. From eternity. John, you are an eternal being. You are not an eternal being later. You're an eternal being right now. And so living from eternity is something we're supposed to be doing all the time. Living from eternity. That means an eternal being, physical death does not stop them. Okay. <laughs> you are an eternal being. Not a, your body will die, but the rest, your spirit lives forever. From right now, not tomorrow, not next week, but right now. And when you start living from eternity, Circumstances do not change you. She does You change circumstances. Because all of a sudden it does not matter because you're an eternal being. And you know, physical death cannot interrupt eternal beings. When my husband moved to heaven, I, I saw him take his last breath. And I said, oh, Holy Spirit. I, I saw him take his last breath. And he said, you saw him take his last breath on earth. But I watched him take his first gulp of eternity. And he didn't say bread. Like, he said gulp, gulp of eternity, a big breath of eternity. <laughs> so when you when you die, one breath you're here, the next the next breath you're in eternity but before creation God predestined you to be an eternal being from your birth even before you are eternal beings that means you will never, ever, ever, ever die. When your body goes to rest, your life has just begun. That takes a lot of sorrow. That takes, that takes a lot of sorrow out of life. To realize that your next breath, even if you die, you win. You win. So death, that's why death has no hold on us. Death has no sting. The people that have gone before, are still so very involved in your lives. They are watching. They are, they are praying. I, 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 something happened the other day. And somebody wrote me and said, you know what, Pastor Debbie? I think 
Pastor Rick probably just went and whispered that to the Holy Spirit to do for you. Um, I think the Holy, that my husband in heaven asked the Holy Spirit to do this special thing for me on earth. So they know where you're at. They know you still. They still are involved. And they watch all that you do. And they're so proud. So they're so proud of you. Because they see you through Jesus' eyes. So if you've got a father or a mother or a child that's gone on to be with Jesus, they're watching. They, they see you. And they're so glad you're sitting here today. So when Jesus was saying about living for eternity in vision, seated with, seated with him, he went on to say that this is how love is made complete. That in this world we are like Jesus. And so he's given us an invitation that not very many people have taken to heart. I am so grieved and so grieved and so tired with people that think God is a big religious something. He's not a big thing in the sky. He is a father. So tender. So loving. When you cry, he cries. When you feel pain, he sorrows for you. He's not, he's real. He's real. Kids, he's real. He's not just a big thing that we call them to call out to when we are in trouble. He is a real person. And if you look in the mirror, you can see his image. Because you were created in his image. And so, just know he wants a relationship with you. He knows your name. He speaks your name. He says you're so special. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name. I want everybody to close your eyes for a minute. And I want you to put your hands out like somebody's going to give you a gift. With them in front of you, right here, like I'm going to lay a gift down in your hand. And I want you to put your hands out like somebody's going to give you a gift. You're the one that ordained this. I know I'm in another country. And these people don't know what I'm talking about sometimes. But your presence, your presence is universal. It's the same here as it is in U.S. It's the same here the, as it is in Uganda. The presence of God. The sound of the presence. You just keep your eyes closed and 
If I say something, well, I don't know if everything's important the Holy Spirit. I was going to say, just let the Holy Spirit know. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Father, I, I want you to just do it, do it with this. Say in your heart, Holy Spirit, I love you. I want you. Please come. Live big in me. Let me feel you. Watch a Thank you, Jesus.